All right, folks, welcome to Driftwood Guitars. My name is Chris. Hey, I'm Matt. We've got Matt over here again, and it's another episode of A Professional Luthier Reacts, and that's what we're doing today, and we're going to do it with um, Breedlove Guitars. In one of their videos they just put out um, leading up to NAMM, it looks like. Yeah. And uh, so it's not even, it's not old, it's it's from July, right? That's when NAMM was? I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, it is 21 minutes long. Now, by the time that my but doesn't stop talking that leads to an hour and a half long video so we're gonna watch this video and there gonna may probably be some jumps some cuts in the video uh just so that we don't end up with a four hour long video but yeah uh, yeah yeah i'm excited to see what it looks like i've always been um just before we even start the video i've always been a fan of breed love guitars um they're just kind of like a a, I think they kind of look cool. They're different, right? That's that's a cool thing. Absolutely. They're very non-traditional. I love what they do with their like uh, North American uh, centric tone woods that they use. They, they try to stay with North American woods a lot of the times. Um, there's some things that I don't like about them, um, but nothing that's noteworthy. Uh, uh, you know, they use a belly reducer out of the gate on all their guitars. Um, I wish they would use a pin bridge instead of unpin bridge. But you know, it's nice that they are offering something that's different than what everybody else is doing too. So, yeah. but I'm excited to, to see what they've got to offer here. I don't think I've seen any of this video. Uh, mm, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I kind of perused it just to make sure it was kosher. You know, yeah. like yeah. Um, but no, I'm excited. Yeah, you ready to get started? Let's let it rip. Tater chip. Welcome to Winter Nam 2021. We're excited to have you here with us. While disappointed we can't visit in person, we're glad to show you what Breed Love is all about. Because they weren't Guitars there, you remember? Yeah, that was a big thing. Pride and joy. Yeah. The passion in our lives and sustainability is in our soul. We'll introduce you to Breed Love, then dive into an exclusive tour of the Bend, Oregon Custom Shop and more in-depth guitar showcases. Let's get started. Okay. Breed Love is building tomorrow's guitars today with sustainable woods every step of the way. Each day nice closer up. to the goal Somewhere of Oregon, sustainability I guess. <laughs> yeah. across all of our instruments. Using knowledge gleaned from our pioneering sound optimization process, we have the right guitar for you at the right time in your musical journey. You will sound better, play better, and play more with a Breed Love. For 30 years, we've been following your lead, designing trusted, quality instruments for a new era in our Bend, Oregon custom shop. Our passion matches yours. Together, we know what makes a great guitar. Four revolutionary body shapes marrying science, art, and beauty. Cater to your individual style, offering personalized signature tones you never thought possible. With unmatched ease of playability, sustainable exotic tone woods, and striking fit and finish across all models. Nice you will fall in okay. love at first drum. I always enjoy the, uh, the breed love difference. I always enjoy the. Um, Hi. You can tell like when it's a commercial from the manufacturer, and I'm guilty of it too. Mm. Like when you've got to like talk about your own instrument, you like use all the superlatives. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's yeah. when you're on the receiving end of it, you're like, you could just say that's what it is, but like I get it, like as yeah. a and, and and that was well done. It's marketing, uh, yeah. <laughs> and once again, you see right out of the gate, Breed Love's really pushing um, sustainability. I think that's the one overarching thing about Breed Love is like. They want you to. I kind of, they're kind of like the uh, in, in the Tom's shoes of guitar building companies. <laughs> they okay. try to present it in this really like uh, uh, like granola kind of very um, you I know mean, that that sells these yeah, things. Yeah, which know? I think yeah. is cool. I think it's a guitar awesome. company presenting because it's you can't compete in um, with uh, the the heritage of Martin and Gibson as far as like the longevity that they've been around. So what is your angle mm -hmm. for them? It's like here's our people. And here's our guitars and why they're why they're sustainable. And that's I think cool. that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Hi everybody, we're here at the Breed Love Workshop in beautiful Bend, Oregon. This is Eric. Good morning, sir. Morning, everybody. How are we Couldn't doing? Couldn't tell if it was him Great. talking or not. We are so <laughs> right. excited yeah. to join you for a tour of the workshop here in Bend. Let's go check it out. Yeah, we're gonna show you the whole process here and where we're starting is the Sound Optimization Center. So we'll talk a bit more about that in a different video, but just wanted to show you guys this. I want to hear about that now. I know. One premiere concerts that Andy was playing for us. Thanks for doing that, Andy. And over here on the left, we've got the raw sets that eventually get built like, into this guitar. So you got an Adirondack thing. Uh, Indian Rosewood back. 
beautiful. Yeah, like the only thing you're not seeing here in terms of raw wood is the sides, which is actually where we're about to head to next. We'll, we'll head out this door and so we're, show you the whole the whole process. We're going to learn how to make it. But I want to see right how here. that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So this looks, and this turned to be like, you saw where he was tapping. It looked like he had like a, a pencil microphone and, and he was analyzing the waveforms. The audio or spectrum. Yeah, the audio spectrum. Yeah, which I, I'm guessing we'll that must be what's happening here. Or we'll have to find that video and do that one later because that seems interesting to me. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, thanks for watching. I know this is going to be kind of a long one, but if you're still here, we appreciate you watching. Um, we talked about the sound optimization tour and possibly doing a second video, and we're actually we're going to make that available only to our patrons on Patreon. So if you're interested in watching that video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. And if you are already a patron of ours on Patreon, God, that's fun to say. Yeah, right? <laughs> but if you're already a, a patron of ours on Patreon, um, then yeah, uh, head on over to Patreon and enjoy this video that we're going to finish for yep. you guys. Thanks. You've done stuff kind of like that in your own studio, right? For a long time, when I first started kind of finding my, my sound, that was part of my process. Yeah. And I doubt they do that with every guitar record. talk, but, yeah. you know, probably every X amount. All right, so this is the, the shop floor here where we do all nice the major there. woodworking. There's a couple really other departments. Small. We'll get to that here in just a sec. We're going to start with Robert over here. Robert bends all the sides. He'll walk you through some of this stuff right now. He's about to pull a side set out of this bender so right now. So he's a bender in Bend, Oregon. <laughs> so this looks well, like a bend, aren't there? <laughs> he's going to throw it in this bender just like this, put all his blocks and clamps on, and get this side set to, to rest in this shape. It's like super. What body shape is this? A concert like that's body shape. Like super. Concert cutaway. Uh, concert cutaway. Beautiful. Yeah. So it goes right in that mold that helps it dry. That's what I hear what he said. Yeah. Uh, it's, it cools down in there. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, like what he's doing right there is shape. super like hobby yeah, level. They're not. They don't have. You would think they'd have some crazy jig for this, but yeah, I love they're doing it old school, cool. just Up individual clamps. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Going all sorts of stuff. And on the right, so he's gonna do each side separately at first. And cut them so they're gonna fit together, put them back in a mold like this with the head and tail block, glue those on, and then you got a complete side set ready it's to go. Seriously, like go check out the next step. Not mass produced Thanks, way Robert. of doing Thank it, which is super cool. Now we're headed over to the curfing station. Yep. And I'll show you a couple quick things before we get to that. So Robert's built all these sides that we got up here on this shelf, right? I'm just curious, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, so he's getting like, that, he'll sand like the top, a like cut nine the sound hole, cut it to shape, and that sort of thing. And he'll draw this pattern on here for Andy to do some bracing, and that's what we're going to show you guys next. <coughs> so this is the bracing station, huh? Want to show Brace us yourself. this one here, Andy? How it kind of works? <laughs> so they're using vacuum. Wow. And there's the um, bracing vacuum pattern clamps. on the top. Uh, yep. We got to get one of those. Guys. And what he'll do is he'll glue them on, obviously. And then he'll turn oh. <laughs> Oh, that's very satisfying. We'll put even pressure down on all those braces. Which and make sure they some people have said, um, and and it's and it's noteworthy, I think. Some people have mentioned for the guitar breakdown videos that we're doing when we talk about glue squeeze out that some of it is because they're using um, uh, vacuum clamping, um, and it is true when you're using vacuum clamping, you can't scrape the glue out because you can't see it. But once it's once it's out of there, you can still clean it up. Yeah. But it's just you, it's it can be a little bit weirder because you're gluing up blind as a guitar builder. You know, like from even for me, you guys have all seen how I use my I use that acrylic template to glue all my stuff up. But you still have you can see what's going on. And like if I need to make any adjustments with my go bar deck or if or if a uh, brace has moved at all, it's the only thing that always has made me nervous about if we do switch out to vacuum clamping is that once you lower that down. If anything, how, shifts, yeah, how you, you can't tell. Check. Yeah, uh, but it's super awesome. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. Um, it's just interesting. And then those bladders only last you so long before you have to replace them, obviously, because they go bad. But I mean, it doesn't take out much space. Um, right, more space than we have. But. Yeah, well, but it just it gives you more consistent pressure, right? It gives you more. Consistent, yeah. yeah, it pulls all the moisture out of the glue too, and um, you end up with a perfect adhesion between the wood and well, the two pieces of wood. It's what I use vacuum clamping to do my to glue my bridges on. Oh. Um, we're going to do it one day. Stay on yeah. there forever. So that's right. underneath every single top of every guitar has a, a structured bracing like that. All right, and I'll show you the back bracing as well. I'm not going to lift the table up on this one. Just a different pattern, standard ladder bracing, but similar idea, right? You want to get even pressure down on all the braces so that uh, it's as strong as possible. So yeah. you're while you're bracing those guitars, then they're going to prep those back, those sides that we saw yes, made in the last oh, yeah. segment. 
So they're gonna prep that. In addition to bracing, Andy comes over here and curves. Dude, this is so old well, school. So, yeah. You can see the. Oh, I love that they just keep bracing Andy. Like, is is, is 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 Andy the only guy that works there? Like, is it, <laughs> Andy <laughs> Andy is Breedlove Guitars. Like, I don't know. Give and, Andy a raise. Yes, <laughs> exactly. A mahogany kerfing along the inner rim there. And what does that kerfing do? So the kerfing adds a, a little extra meat for all, when we glue this top and back on. You can see the sides relatively thin, wouldn't have a lot to join on to. So you add the kerfing there just so uh, that glue has more to hold on. And it's it, just it just me. makes it a lot thick stronger, to me, man. obviously. So. Which I mean, cool. I'm all about a stiff side. Yes, like, sir. Awesome. Yeah. After, uh, after kerfing, what you got here, see if this one's done. Yeah. So here's the finished sides, right? Yeah. With the head and tail block and all the kerfing in there, Logan all the side braces as well. A lot of these yep. are hurdle wood. Uh, the guy who normally does this build process is actually out today, but I'm going to walk you guys through wood? it just so you yep. know how it all goes down here. Let's see if uh, this works. So what he'll do is he'll More grab the back wood. for the instrument and to prep God, this, he'll awesome. actually shave the braces off a little bit on the index. Back here, by the way, is that indexing? So or? that's probably indexing. You can you see uh, in the waist area, there's two pinholes, yeah. and then there's the pinhole at the bottom. Those are all alignment uh, pins for doing uh, just the assembly process. And then the other thing that I'm noticing that's really interesting, if you look at the back strap, uh, the piece of mahogany that goes down the length of it mm -hmm. is different than what most people use. Uh, I think it looks cool, but I will say that I think it's less effective than you would traditionally see. I think this looks cooler, but um, a, and a really effective back strap should be uh, uh, perpendicular. The grain on it should run perpendicular to the grain on the back so that they kind of counteract one another, whereas the grain on that mahogany back strap is running the same way as the back. So if it were, to, it could crack as well as the back of the guitar. I mean, the chances of it happening are pretty negligible. Right. But... It looks cool. Yeah, it looks <laughs> awesome. so far. I want to say now we're we're what six minutes into this video, mm -hmm. and I am really surprised. Uh, as far as I know, this is not their custom shop. This is just the Breedlove factory. This seems like super boutique, really. Yeah, uh, considering Breedlove's not a small company. I'm right. sure that people can correct me here uh, that oh. they maybe have. Oh, a, they will. Well, <laughs> you guys will. That I don't know if they have a, a factory for like their lower end guitars or not, but uh, so far I'm. I'm really surprised. Uh, what's his name again? <laughs> Andy. Andy's killing it. Andy's putting in the, <laughs> putting in the hours, man. <laughs> Sides, they can really rest perfectly. The whole body can rest perfectly on that kerfing on the back rim. Yep. He'll throw this down on the table here. I might have to spin this up a little bit. He'll put glue along this entire back rim. He'll also sand this a little flush. Then he'll, he would set this right on just like that. Obviously, like I said, normally these braces would be cut down so it's going to rest perfectly on there. Yep. He'll put glue along the the top curve here. But it's in a mold, I assume. Do the same thing for the top. Normally, you prep those braces. It's got to be in a mold. While Slam that bad boy on there like that. Yep. He puts a lot of weight on there. With this eventually, thing, right? Eventually, well, yeah, he's actually got a big old uh, there. mold there of the, this yeah. exact body shape down here. Um, but then, yes, he'll add extra pressure with this press here and then get all three of these pieces, the top, back, and the, the sides, time. to become one thing. That's and efficient. You close the box, yeah. and uh, that's it's very what we're going to next over um, here. We do ours, the glue the tops on, then the backs on, in two separate maneuvers. And most pl places that I've seen do it, do it that way. So that's interesting. I hope they show that. Kind of, I mean, it kind of, it, uh, for me, at least from like a manufacturing standpoint, it makes sense. It's just, yeah. you know, you're getting it all done in one, yeah. one sweep. So the closed boxes are here. And uh, I gotta find Aaron. Aaron oh, yeah. Aaron's gonna show us uh, what we do with them after this. Pull one of those out. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be like, just kidding, guys, it's me, it's still Andy. It's <laughs> still Andy. Yeah. 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 Show that off. Sinker Redwood. There. That's uh, Redwood. next year's Legacy concert. Beautiful. Sinker Redwood top and East wow. Indian Rosewood back and sides. Just beautiful. So you can see here, there's a little bit of overhang on that top and back. And yeah, gonna just take a care little of bit of extra. Just a little bit of extra. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Let's Next check this out. Might be loud, but since there's no mic over Back there, hold downs. We'll, we'll oh, see how loud Those are cool tables, dude. Yeah. But it's definitely loud. The ergonomics of that great too, like right above waist height. We need tables like this. Hell yeah. Look, it just it sucked it down right away. Mm-hmm. And they're cutting these out by hand still. They're they're trimming. 
all of these. Uh, <laughs> a, yeah, that's a Dewalt router, like you get it at a, you know, at a hardware store. Well, he's just not going down the hill, though. That makes me nervous. <laughs> he's just <laughs> raw dogging it. He's probably got a good spiral cut, you know, like. You uh, can see he just flushed up the entire back. He's going to do the same I thing. I think it's on, on a top. foot deactivator, too, the vacuum clamp. Uh, oh my god, the fact that he's not going downhill makes me so nervous. <laughs> It's working. He's not having any issues, but mother. Obviously, he's a trained professional and he's used to doing this. But don't if if you haven't built many guitars, do not just go all the way around the guitar in one direction. Like do it <laughs> downhill because he's probably got a bit that works that they know works really well. Obviously, it's working for him. But holy cow! Yeah, <laughs> I'm just waiting for a big chunk of wood to just rip out of the side of that guitar. Uh, <laughs> it's a like, throttle response. Oh yeah, I'm freaking out. <laughs> Now a lot of that extra material is gone, so it's pretty flush. He's still got a little, uh, well, he's got a lot more to do, really, but he's going to take Put it over to the belt sander yeah. and hit any uh, any big chunks that maybe didn't got missed with the router. He's going to freehand it. This is a pretty crazy process. He makes it look easy, but it is not. Yeah, he does this all day. Yeah. That is sporty. I mean, I guess it works. A real light touch and a real clear. Yeah. That's. Give this man a raise. Woo! Right on. So Woo, after that, Aaron that was impressive. Over to some <laughs> yeah. He's got all, you know, got to bind the whole instrument, so that's going to take. That's a very detailed process. Uses uh, tape and glue. They're and a doing lot of this the old school here. way. I mean, hand sanding at this they're not point. doing this the old school way. It seems like they're going, this is how you build a guitar. Um, and yes, we're a larger company now, but we're still building them the way that we did when we only built a hundred a year. Yeah. That's fascinating. And, and it's funny cause it's like, is there a sonic benefit to like doing it this way? I don't believe so. But what I do think is that there's just, you're, you're required to pay more attention. And if there are any issues with the guitar along the way, you're going to see them and you're yeah. going to have time to correct them. And I think that that is what we're hit. I'm kind of figuring this out as we do these reviews as well. Like you guys are doing a good job of pushing back. Um, and so like, and why is that a bad thing if it still gets you the same product? And you know what? A lot of times you're right, but I do think that it's a QA issue, yeah. a, a big part of it. And, it. and it's just nice to see that like, even me as a hand builder, I'm doing the same techniques as so far the breed love, which I did not expect. Uh, yeah. It, I guess what you're, what you're getting is like, if you're, if you have your hands on and your eyes and a different set of eyes on every part of the step, then that is your quality control throughout each part yeah. of the process. So it, what it means is that there's probably not a guy at the end of the line. Mm -hmm. Mighty guy just gives a look over. Yeah, and, and you would imagine even as, I bet you these builders have a more of a vested interest in each individual guitar because they're spending more time with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? As opposed to like, I've spent literally 30 seconds with this guitar and now it's moving down the line to the next person. Yeah. It's just interesting. Yeah. And that was, it's very unexpected. Hmm to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Gotcha. You see he's spending the majority of his time in the area where the neck's gonna go. When you're leveling the sides, that's where you wanna be spending the most of the time paying attention because that's gonna be where the neck joint and everything all fits. And here's one that's getting a little closer, right? I mean, you can see he's got the tail strip in there. He's got the top bound up. He still has to bind the back. So before, let's see the back of that thing. Yeah, sure. So he's going to carve a cavity. Channel, yeah, yeah, that he carves in to put the That's the part we just shot. For so that little cavity there is going to get filled with binding material. And when it's done, Abalone. it looks like this. Yeah, really wow. nice looking legacy. These things are going to be awesome next year. I wonder what these legacy guitars the, uh, are going to cost. Limited yeah. Northwest he's My got there. Okay. That's more Ergen, Morgan. Wow, More Oregon Myrtlewood there. Exotic Myrtlewood. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtlewood. <Myrtle Yeah>. <laughs> they all look different too, and we're gonna have a bunch of those ready for customers. A little bit this month and next, and in February for sure. So, so the Oregon Myrtlewood grows in a little forest in Northern California and in Southern Oregon, uh, and it's the only place it grows. And it's really cool that they're using. They they're in Bend, Oregon. They're using a lot of uh, giant redwood. Yeah, Sinker Redwood and Oregon Myrtle Wood. So they're not only using North American woods, but they're using woods that are like available in their backyard. And that's super cool. Um, I, I was just going to comment. So they're doing all this by hand. And it sounds like they're also, they're saying like they're making these guitars now. And then they're like, they're saying they're going to be offered later this year. Mm -hmm. So then they're building a back stock right now, which is, sounds a, like it. that is a, from purely from a business standpoint, just I comment like, you know, it's, it's an old school way of doing things, but it's like, um, you know, it, 
whenever we watch the videos of, of Taylor making guitars, like, you know, they're building like 600 guitars a day to try and get them out there and they're trying to, you know, keep up with supply keep up and demand and all this other stuff. And yeah, and um, this is just, uh, I guess, refreshing to see it. It is. And also, and, and like, and, and it's fiscally detrimental, but it, it's... Um, Oh, there's clearly a much more efficient ways these guys could be treating this like a business. Yeah. But the fact that they're still being kind of pure guitar builders in many ways is really interesting. Yeah. It's funny because for me, I have never played a breed love that knocked my socks off. With that said, I haven't played a lot of breed loves. But this is super cool. Yeah. So far. Door. Uh, I've never thank played you, a breed yeah, love, but I kind of want to now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh,. Obviously, one thing we haven't talked about yet, we pretty much built the whole body of the guitar, but one thing we have left is the neck over here. So, we showed you how we put a body Where together. Where's everybody at? But we haven't gotten to the neck part, <laughs> that's important, right? So, Paul's gonna show us a little bit of the shaping of a neck. Um, these start from, uh, this one in particular started from a mahogany Wonder billet. Seeing, seeing we get two it. necks out of each billet. They're, they're cut it first with a bandsaw, then the guys put it in a CNC to give it its general shape. Sure. Then there's still like a lot of handwork that next. goes into yeah. it to shape it properly. Okay. And uh, Paul's a stringed instrument player, so he's got that, that feel for that sort of thing. That helps a lot. Okay. He's going to do a little bit we'll of riding to make some nice curves on it. Get the edge all cleaned up. There's like a scarf joint neck here, which we've learned is stronger than a one-piece neck. That all out. <laughs> we're gonna do a little. I think we're gonna do some videos to test it out, to experiment with it. Yeah. See that there, and then he's gonna come back at that with all sorts of different tools to smooth it out. Mold it oh, interesting is that they're not. It's just gonna be a pure butt joint. You could just see. It's right in your hand. Right. Straighten that all out. Yeah. But there's no there's no dovetail. There's no uh, mortise or tenon. So it's a bolt on neck, but it's just gonna be a pure butt joint. And that's an interesting choice for me. What uh, is that? Um, I mean, so if it's a if there's no further joining there, I guess that technically makes it easier to service, right? It's super easy to service, but yeah. you just end up with a lot less contact points, and less indexing as well. You know, dovetail mm -hmm. it truly locks in with the other piece of wood, um, and then like the bolt-on that I use is a mortise and tenon. The bolt-on that most people use is a mortise and tenon. Um, like the only time I ever use a pure butt joint like this is on ukuleles. Uh, there's not enough string tension to really be a concern, but this right. is—I'm not one of the. This is a whole can of worms. I'm not one of these people that thinks the neck joint really has a big factor in what the sound of the guitar is. It's so negligible. <laughs> there's, there's better hills to die on than than, than dovetail versus bolt-on. I'm just saying. <laughs> Leave us a comment if you disagree. <laughs> exactly. So that it uh, feels right in your hand when you're playing. I like it. All right, Paul. I appreciate that, man. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. So, <laughs> once the. Uh, neck and body are completed we'll put it over here and um i'll just show you real quick this is at one point where the guitar will get inspected um so i'll grab a neck here grab the body what happens is we got a guy here that'll um look over everything that's been built so far all the woodworking aspects of the guitar make sure there's no imperfections or anything that went, went wrong with it um and one last thing he'll do he does some sound optimization stuff which we'll again talk more about in a different video video <laughs> but uh yeah. Tell me that. But I want to know now. Thing they'll do is they'll bolt the neck on there where it goes Plus and place a bridge on here as a template and check the projection at this point of the neck sure where the bridge Checking will actually be yep and that's just so we can work it a little bit more right now while it still doesn't have finish or color on it or anything because it's easier to work with when it's raw wood yep and once they get that projection right they're gonna send it over to the finish department, which is where we're heading next. Okay. So it's interesting. Um, projection, I think, was a port, it, it, probably just you know he's speaking on the fly. Uh, he's talking about neck angle there. Um, the nice thing about what they're doing uh, with no mortise or tenon and no dovetail is that you could floss it really easily. Anybody who's built a guitar, uh, there's a technique that you use where it's called flossing, where you just take a piece of sandpaper between... It's not, it's not the dance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not the dance. Yeah. <laughs> it's not for your teeth. Yeah. But you put a piece of sandpaper between where the neck meets the body and you, you pull it as, and you slowly get that neck, the, the bottom of the neck, the cheeks of it to fit the body of the guitar. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have more than 10, it's a lot easier to do. Uh, I just think that that's just a weird, an odd choice. No, no, uh, I, I'm, I could be wrong that that maybe more manufacturers are doing that now. I don't know. We're headed to the finish department, everybody. We're doing a tour of the Breathe Up workshop in Bend, Oregon. We're learning very, 
concise, faster tour of how you would make well, kind of a Reed Love guitar. Are. So you can see <laughs> that's, these that's are a few <laughs> of the ones that have cleared and selected that wood. department. They're going to be ready for color Maple. and all that sort of stuff. So we got a few in the works, and there's plenty more you'll see hanging around cool. here that are all in process and finished. Sure. Let's check right it out. Right here, we got uh, Dalton Bell playing our Oregon With latex limited canyon burst for next year. You guys will see this in the second half of this year. Um, it'll be hard to hear back here with the dust collector. I'm just impressed he's playing with latex guitar. gloves on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. The finish actually has gold metallic in it as well, so it's pretty exciting stuff that we're doing. A little different than uh, most acoustic manufacturers. A little different for us too, but we're Look at all the guitars so queued far. up in the background. That's super yeah. cool. What's going on right here? So you can see uh, what Brad's doing is uh, is using the buffing wheel and kind of cleaning this one up. So this right thing behind it, I love this dust collection system that they have, like set up just kind of as a shoe covering it up. That's what I hate about the buffing process is it makes my face all itchy because all the dust from all the uh, the linen just gets in your nose and it's just the worst. It's yeah. just the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so that finish has been sanded a little bit. Um, and he's just starting to make it all shine back up. Give her That's that not nature, I don't I think. I can tell pretty good on the video there. That left, left side is still a little hazy. Over here. That right side is getting And they're buffing by hand. Yeah. yeah. It looks like they're entirely buffing. I'll show you by one hand. more thing here with finish. I like how the middle uh, of this is like, oh, by the way, you missed a spot. <laughs> Look how hard that buffing wheel is. The thing is super Thank stiff. Thank you, sir. So, what Dalton's holding is another one of those limited Northwest. We saw that a second ago with Aaron. Um, and I know this looks finished. But it's not quite yet. It's just been More sprayed. That finish still needs to get flattened out and evened. So he's going to do something to it that might not seem like it makes a whole lot of sense. But here he goes. Oh no! Sandpaper! <laughs> yeah, so that finish needs to be flattened out yep. and sanded down to, I believe, 3,000 grams. That's a downdraft table, it so it's wheel. sucking that dust right out. And that's the problem oh. we're going to start with here. That's so cool. And so he's going to sand this down, so awesome. he's going to take it back to a buffing wheel to make it nice and shiny and beautiful. Exactly, yep. yep. I like it. So that's why you saw that haze with Brad just a second ago sure. from this. You know? All right, so I was t I, th I don't shut up during these videos. Uh, <laughs> What I think is super cool, A, they're hand buffing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like how I would have to do it. You buff it out. You really don't know whether you're ready for the final buff until you get on the buffing wheel. And then you'll get in there, and then you start to buff and go, man, okay, it's not quite ready yet. Because the buffer will start to reveal if there's any scratches that are a little too deep still. And that's what they, exactly what they did here. Buff it. Okay, it needs to go back. And then it goes back and do some more sanding. Yeah. Uh, it's weird to doing dry sanding. Uh, that's obviously for cleanup. I mean, that's obviously for like a speed thing, wet sanding, all of this stuff. I think there's, I saw a spray bottle back there. So maybe. Well, I mean, he's doing that dry, but. Yeah. It, it, but yeah. And so they're going and they're, once again, because it's a slower process, there's more QA along the way, mm -hmm. you know, or QC, QA is a military term, QC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, along the way. So they're, once again, checking their work as they go. So the much, much less likely that it, when it's finished, that there's issues with it, which yeah. is a cool thing. It's, it's a nice attention to detail. Gotcha. Uh, and like I said, I just want to sand that stuff down so it gets as One flat and too. smooth as possible. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, once they, they yeah. can do all the wheels, thanks Dalton. Once they take it through all the wheels, they'll throw it on this shelf over here. You can see they got uh, different compound to make make that uh, get smoother and smoother at the different wheels they take it on. See which one I want to grab. I wonder why this the front See bolts bare wood on all of these. It's a Myrtle wood guitar. What's Myrtle wood with a stain? All Myrtle wood, Myrtle wood back, Myrtle wood sides, and a Myrtle wood top. Woo! It's all matching. Myrtle wood top. These are pretty guitars. For sure. <laughs> They're I like pretty. The first on but Myrtle wood just doesn't make for a great top awesome. wood. I mean, it's not going to sound horrible. It's just not so going to sound horrible. So they'll put them here for our string up guys, and you can see right now. The neck is still separated from the body. I wonder there's some sort of washer. Here, they're going to put it all together in there or something like that. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a cool room. It's like setup room. Yes, sir. Look at this. this. Is where they all really become guitars, for sure. This is great. So all these guitars are being assembled. Shut up. And yep. They are seriously here. still gluing on. They're using vacuum clamps for their bracing, but they're not even vacuum gluing on. Um, their bridges, which is such a weird choice. Like gluing on vacuum, vacuum gluing on bridges is faster and it's and it's better and less destructive, uh, less likely to like drop a clamp and mess up the finish. Um, but still, just like in incredibly impressed. Not, it's weird. I feel like I'm fanboying out on this. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not fanboying. I'm just really uh, surprised at the level of like 
non mass produced styles of building that they're using. That's yeah. what it is. Stylistically, it's still really boutique, but you know, on my mind, Breedlove was just going to be another turn and burn, move it down the assembly totally line. Totally not what we were expecting. Yeah. At all. yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. And you can see what Steve's working on right now is he's already bolted on and glued the neck. He's got the clamps on there. Here. I just saw him run out to probably grab some epoxy for this bridge. Epoxy? Gotcha. So he's routed out the slot where mm. he's going to put epoxy. Don't like epoxy. Uh, he, I can see his bridge. Right um, the issue there. I say with epoxy is um, you really don't want to use, a, you don't want to epoxy a bridge on because if it needs, or if and when it lifts eventually, I, I think it's probably more or less likely to not lift. But yeah, because epoxy is stronger. Yeah, but, but if it does lift, it's going to be a nightmare to repair. I never did any repairs on breed loves when I was doing repair work. But if any of you guys are repair techs, um, let me know if you've had any issues with um, the bridges at all. I mean, I, I don't know how many y'all knew that it was an epoxy on bridge. That's that's an interesting choice. Yeah. Grab it for you. And so he's taken off this finish, so it's a wood to wood contact, exactly. so that this will this will bond better with that epoxy. Like he's gotcha. got index holes here, and he puts toothpicks in the bottom of the bridge, so it goes right where he thinks it's supposed to every time. Yeah. Um, he's gonna. Mix up some epoxy, throw that all down here. Even then, like it's just a random assortment of way here. clamps. Like and this whole part of the yeah. process is pretty easy, right? You just slap it together. You don't have to check anything. <laughs> this is it's possibly just... one of the most detailed processes of building a guitar. Uh, not just because it, you know it's a final instrument; it's not raw wood anymore, so you have to deal with all the finish issues and stuff like that. But you know, you got to be, you got to pay attention to the minute details. Because any mistakes here will translate to issues for his I mean, yeah, yeah, there are there are plenty of ways. This to is not a small company, but exactly. so. so this is it's true what he's saying, though. Um, for those of you that are getting really started in building, he makes good points there. Like you get, I know for me when I first started building, you get to this point where now it's a, the neck's on it, the finish is on it, it looks beautiful, and now you're like, dude, I'm a couple hours away from string up, and that's when you start to get in a hurry. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And that's when you're going to make the mistakes. So you have to learn to like trick yourself into like, okay, we're not even at the finish line yet. We just got to take our time. And sometimes when I get to this point, it's still two days away from string up because I just really want to be careful, uh, especially because now it's got finish on it. You got to be more ginger around your workbench so that you right. don't get like when we build a proper workbench we're going to have a clean room mm -hmm. for final assemblies be, yeah. with like a carpeted workbench because i have literally dropped stuff right on top of a brand new guitar before <laughs> <Dope. laughs> yeah. yeah i digress really cool <laughs> right so that one's getting so after together. it's assembled they'll uh take it to our sand out machine flatten that fretboard get it right where the they want and then look at this Taylor here, on it. and Eric will show you how we. <laughs> so Taylor it. sold those for years. Uh, this a Taylor fret bucket, so that you can do the um, install the frets over the fingerboard extension. Um, but we just read too. I, I didn't realize that Breedlove was actually uh, started by two gentlemen that used to work at Taylor. Yeah. Well, uh, and and the original Breedlove guy went back to Taylor. Too, he's so. back at Taylor. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, you can buy those Taylor fret bucks even still to this day. I do my frets before I put um, them on the neck. Everybody's kind of got their own way. And part of it for me is just less risk. <laughs> At least you gotta like cover up the whole guitar and make sure you don't mess up anything. Right, right. I also press my frets in too. And a couple of these frets. Now a lot of these frets we we cut ourselves. Some come pre-cut. He's got like a. Um, but they'll always like a, uh, do like a little a work call. to the frets. As yeah, well, kind I of prep them and make sure that they're gonna go in smooth and not. I've never seen someone do it that way. It's kind of a hybrid between you know, pressing and them yeah. and fret slots as well, and then he'll just pound them in just like that. I would guess it distributes force leather so you don't gonna, get as much risk of damage to the frets. Bevel the slot. edges so you don't have any sharp fret ends. He's going to level all the frets one more time and then polish them up and shine them so they, they really pop. Gotcha. This is really cool. Okay. Over here, we'll see where Gary, what Gary's working on right now. Bro. Okay, there. So after the sand out, that even though uh, the sand out machine does a lot of the flattening of the fretboard, we'll still go across it with hand blocks. And if, this isn't, if this isn't the custom shop, I am blown away at the level <laughs> yeah. of like, this is a handmade guitar. Yeah. Um, I don't know what these guitars are. We should, I, I didn't look up how much this specific line of guitars, but it seems like this is just all the breed loves. Um, they offer guitars like in the $600 range. If this is what's going into a $600 guitar, I don't know how you make a profit. It can't, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is. But this is this is incredible. How much handwork is going? In. Like the this is where a lot of companies will skip corners here and just yeah. really move them down the line. But there's these dudes are like putting in the work. 
sure that the radius is correct and that we're not seeing any gaps. No, no, I'm, I'm going to pull my phone out. I'm going to keep going. Keep going. I'm going to pull my phone out because I got to know. Yeah. Like that fret forward like that. Gotcha. So you can stand down and see if there's any gaps. So side in as well. So use a, a radius gauge to make sure the, the whole length of the fretboard is radius properly. Here, here's that radius gauge. He's looking for any light shining through underneath there. Yeah. And if there is, he'll wow. reattack. But trust rod through the sound hole. Process, similar you know. to the way that I do After it. That, I always just like the way it looks work. better. We're put on all the hardware, electronics. Yeah. Uh, dial it into our specifications. And yeah, and it's like you know the cameras are on him right now, so obviously he's really doing a good job. But still, I, this is clearly with how they do it on all the guitars. It's just it's it's really impressive. Yeah. Once they're finished with that, they'll turn it in to get inspected one more time, which is where we're going to head to next. Let's go check it out. Let's right. see one of these things that's finished. I Thanks, can't guys. Wait. So at this point in time, a guitar is complete. It has all yeah. of the hardware, the strings. Exactly. It's tuned up. It's ready to go. Oh, but yeah. it has one final aspect of the process. Yes, sir. To be checked out. They do have some so, that are built in China. Okay. They all turn them in in this, this room. It looks like this just in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're hearing from our, our international bureau that these guitars <laughs> do have a line that is built overseas. So yeah. Uh, but this is their Bend, Oregon the factory. US, yeah. There's the USA series, and. Yeah, okay. but so okay, yeah. So this is this is more like their custom shop. Yeah, but still, it's just, it's, yeah, it's crazy cool though. Um, we don't we don't do a whole bunch of research before I watch these. Part of it is I really do want to have a visceral reaction to what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is <laughs> you're learning with us from here, and Ian Cook here is gonna inspect all of them. So he's got in his hands right Sinker there another one of those legacy concerts we were showing off earlier. Wow. This one's all finished, all ready to go, except for Ian's inspection, obviously. So. Ian's gonna look over every part of the build process. It's a good looking point, guitar. From you know the finish the to the neck. assembly mm -hmm. to all the hardware that we were talking about, the nut and saddle work. Um, make sure everything looks right before we ship. The it only out. thing Obviously, I wish we could have seen um, is how what like what kind of finish and how they're spraying their finishes. Um, I assume that these are probably either UV. They look, they look like a UV cured finish or a poly, but UV is obviously a big uh, a speeding it up. They're not nitrocellulose. Yeah. Just by it's how kinda, they, it's kind of trendy now, right? Like yeah. UV, yeah. <laughs> by how it looks, it just it looks a little too thick and glossy to be uh, a nitro finish. Test. He'll check specifications and uh, see what it sounds like. Really. So this room is where these guitars get played for the first time. It's where they, yep. you get to hear them all job. sing their oh, first, their yeah. first song, pretty so to much, speak. Yeah. This is a pretty magical little room. There looks like my grand yeah. session yeah. or my this session model. Right. And we, we record all this information so we can keep track of how everything's going through the process and how smooth everything sounds. And there's a little bit more involved on this side when it comes to sound optimization, which again, will be in a separate Well, we gotta do a sound optimization sure video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We'll dig into that sound optimization process. We'll do another whole video. So if you enjoyed this tour of the Breed Love Workshop, make sure that you join us for the sound optimization tour. It's a great complimentary video to this whole process. And this was a very quick tour of this whole process. Yeah, we did it pretty fast, man. It takes a lot longer <laughs> to build one than to show you how we do it. But thank you for taking the time to walk us through the yeah, shop absolutely. and show us what's going on. This has been great. Yeah, man. Shout out to thank our boy so Andy. for joining us for this <laughs> behind the scenes tour of the Breed Dove Workshop in Bend, Oregon. That was a cool idea. Uh, that was a cool idea that they Take did care. this we'll instead of, um, you know, because they weren't at, at, at NAMM. Yeah, we have yeah. a friend who owns a music shop here and they were interested in, I was like, you're gonna have to check out Breed Love because you should carry Breed Love. Uh, and they weren't there, but this is a, a cool cool way of doing that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I think I've said it all. I mean, I've just been uh, really impressed because I we I don't know what the pricing is on these guitars. I assume it's probably like two to five grand, probably in that price range. You know, your, your upper end, you know, Taylor range, your, yeah. your upper end Martin range. It makes sense to price yourself around there, yeah. But those are really, really, really uh, well, um, there's a lot of attention paid. I, yeah. I can't make commentary on what the final product sounds like. I, like I said, I have very limited uh, access to Breed Loves and I've only played a few and the ones that I did play were kind of in the lower the lower range. Mm -hmm. um, but those, that was, 
that was impressive. I didn't see the things I didn't see, which doesn't mean they don't exist. I didn't see if they have anybody voicing the guitars. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like he said, there's a whole another separate section on yeah. uh, what do they call it? Voice optimization, uh, or, some, or yeah, or some, sound optimization, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, there's some department where they're doing uh, something to to talk about how we're going to make each guitar sound good. Um, and uh, we didn't see how they put the finishes on them. But but overall, it seems like it's a pretty small operation for the for the Bend organ plant. Yeah, um, it looks like it may have been like a Friday late afternoon or something. <laughs> like there was like yeah. five people here. Well, I'm sure, and I'm sure they probably you know if they if they it's a corporate thing. If they know there's a camera crew yeah. going through, they probably you know like they might have you know sent a yeah, couple this, people Yeah, this it's a good time to, to come on at four o'clock on Friday because there's not as much going. You know, it's not yeah. as loud. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. No, I. I uh, it, uh, yeah, dude, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised by a lot of things. I, th I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. If you guys uh, like Breed Love guitars, maybe leave us a comment about what your impressions are of them. And uh, yeah, tell us what your thoughts were. Also, we've, this has happened to us in the past um, on some of our other videos. Um, we've had people that actually worked at Martin and yeah. at Taylor reach out to us. If you work at uh, Breed Love and you have anything you want to add to this, uh, send us an email. Yeah, yeah. that's that's been really uh, it's been really nice, you know, touching base with some other builders and some other mm -hmm. makers and some bigger factories and kind of like getting to pick their brains yeah. and eventually share our maybe thoughts, so, we'll yeah. do some of these in, in person. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. Put some miles on the the company credit card. You know? Yeah, drive to Bend, Oregon from Florida. Yeah. Um, anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate yeah, it. We'll yeah. See you in the next see one. See you in the next one. Bro, that was forty two minutes. That's it's long, but it's almost like you could let that ride. I, I'm probably going to. Honestly, yeah. people people will skip. They'll jump around.